I, 32 male have been with my wife, 30 female for 10 years we met in college and have always had a classic storybook kind of romance. That is until recently when we moved across the country to Washington, I had a job opportunity. We couldn't pass up and we both agreed it was the best thing for our family to move. Even though she agreed, I could sense some resentment from her. She recently found a new office job that is perfect for her skills and career ambitions. Everything started to feel normal again. We were both happy and our kids would have more opportunities. Thanks to the move. After a few weeks, I noticed she was coming home later than normal. When I questioned the delay, she told me she was stuck at the office filing some paperwork. I shocked it up to her being the new kid on the block and taking over a lot of the grunt work. I started to get suspicious about it when she would only reply with vague details or brush off my attempts to ask her about her work. I've never wanted to be the controlling or nosy spouse. So I asked her if there was something going on and she said, no, she always insisted that she was just working and she was the only one there and she wanted to get out as quickly as possible because of that. She made it seem like I was crazy for even thinking about it. And I believed her, the company Thanksgiving opened my eyes to what was really going on. Not long after arriving, a man walked over to me and introduced himself. Let's call him, Ned. Ned was my wife's work husband and he introduced himself to me as such. He seemed friendly at first, but it would have taken a blind man not to notice how he looked at her. Ned was a married man and I met his wife that night too. We discussed how much our respective partners do for the company and how we hoped the bosses would keep that in mind for the upcoming Christmas bonuses. Then she mentioned how Ned was always staying late to make sure they were caught up on work as soon as she said that my suspicions were confirmed and I knew there was something going on between them. There wasn't any point in confronting my wife because she would just lie to my face again. So I did what I never wanted to do snoop one night after she'd gone to bed, I grabbed her phone to look through it. She changed the passcode which was strange because we had always shared each other's passcodes, but I was able to open it with Face ID. I searched through the messages and found dozens of messages between her and Ned. They were all very suggestive and sexual and there was clear evidence that they'd been sleeping together in the office. The real kicker was when I looked through her photo gallery, apparently men had been filming them and he sent one of the videos to my wife. They were very clearly in the office when it was filmed too. I airdropped the video to myself. So I'd have a copy of it for my own evidence and I pretended like nothing happened. I met with a divorce attorney in secret and filed with them so she couldn't say or do anything to interfere with my plans. I scheduled a meeting with her boss to show them the video. I arrived with my lawyer and we invited my wife and Ned into the boardroom with clear glass walls and no curtains mind you and played the video Ned recorded for him. We printed out copies of the messages and handed them to her boss to read over too. He was appalled by what he had seen. He even backed away from the table we were at because that was the table used in the video. They were both fired on the spot. My wife looked at me with a horrified expression and ran over to me to question why I did that. I didn't say anything. Instead my lawyer handed her an envelope filled with our divorce papers and a copy of the prenuptial agreement. Her affair was clearly in violation of she threatened to fight it in court. But because infidelity was the major clause of the prenup, she didn't have a leg to stand on because she didn't have a job and had proven herself to be dishonest. The courts ruled in my favor for custody. She ended up having to move back home to live with her mother while I stayed in Washington with the kids. First of all, I'm sorry, you had to go through all of that. It almost sounds to me like she was cheating out of spite for moving. But if she was so resentful about it, why did she agree in the first place? If it was truly something she was unhappy with, the best thing to do is communicate with your partner even if you were dead set on going her. Honestly, telling you she couldn't end, suggesting divorce would have been better than cheating. You gave her the opportunity to tell you the truth and she continued to lie. I can't help but wonder how long she and Ned would have continued their affair. Had you not discovered it? It sounded like she was trying to manipulate you when you asked about an affair too. It's clear that her family wasn't a priority for her and it's probably a good thing. She's back with her mother and you have the children.
I'm glad you're away from her and I wish you and your children the best. Now let's move on to our next story. For the day. Me, 29 male and my wife, 27 female have been married for three years. We fell in love right away and had been virtually inseparable since our first date. We even worked at the same hospital. Spending so much time together was a dream come true. I thought she was the love of my life right before the pandemic, we had been trying for a baby as luck would have it. It finally took due to her pregnancy and being high risk, she ended up having to leave her job at the hospital. I'm a doctor and those first few months of the pandemic were some of the most difficult of my life because of how much I was exposed to the virus. We figured it would be safest for her and the baby if I rented an apartment until things got better. I was there for her every step of the way virtually. But I was devastated. I could be there physically. She had her sister with her though and they assured me she was being well taken care of fast forward. Five months after explaining my position, I took a leave of absence from work and moved back and the baby was coming due soon and I couldn't miss the first few months of his life. There was a lot of distance between us at first, but we fell back into our usual habits quickly while we were apart, she had taken a remote job that she continued working at, even after the baby was born and things began going into the green. So she was home quite often. So it was our neighbor. I'd always had a bad feeling about the guy. He was married and had children of his own, but he was always offering to stop by and check in on my wife. I always tried to brush it off as him just being a small town nosy neighbor during the pandemic and the pregnancy, my sister-in-law came to live with us to help out and she ended up staying a bit longer after things started improving. I also went back to working in the R since that has always been my professional desire. I don't recall when it all started but they both started hanging out with my neighbor quite frequently. They went to the park with the kids together, they take them to kids' movies together and he'd often invite them over for barbecues on the weekends. But all of this was usually when I was on call, so I was never there. It started to feel like I was missing out on my own life and my neighbor had stepped into my spot one day I got sick at work and had to come home early. I got back to my house around 6 p.m. And when I walked in, my sister-in-law was sitting on the couch with my baby and the neighbor's kid that struck me as a little odd but it wasn't unusual for her to offer to babysit. I asked where my wife was and she got quiet and then switched the questioning back to be about asking why I was home so early, her car was still in the driveway. So I knew she hadn't gone anywhere. I looked for her all over my house and still didn't see her. I realized that if the neighbor's kid was there, then there was a chance he might know where she was. Part of me thought she might be with him. But I didn't want to believe that at the time I walked over to his house and rang the doorbell, but there was no answer. He usually kept his car in the garage. So I couldn't tell if he was home or not without peeking inside. And I didn't want other neighbors to think I was a creep. So I didn't. When I walked back inside, sister-in-law was on the phone whispering to someone. As soon as she saw me, she quickly hung up. I didn't ask her who it was because I had a strong enough suspicion. It was my wife and part of me didn't want the confirmation just yet. My wife came home about 20 minutes later in a nice dress that I bought her for her birthday, carrying some fast food chicken with her. She tried to convince me that she'd just gone out to get some chicken for dinner with the neighbor. But I didn't believe her. Why would she have needed to get all dressed up with a full face of makeup for a drive through I knew she was lying to me but I couldn't prove it just yet. I didn't want to blow up on her in front of the children in the house either. So I hired API to watch the house for a few days and see what they came up with. It didn't take long for them to report back with evidence of her cheating. The PI was stationed outside of our house and brought me photos and videos of my neighbor bringing his kid over for my sister-in-law to watch while my wife spent time with him in his house. He had a few photos of them kissing in various states of undress too. That was enough evidence for me to proceed to file for divorce. I still had the lease on the apartment I had rented during the pandemic. So I planned to move in there. I didn't want to continue living in the house. My wife was likely cheating on me and over time. I moved enough stuff over there so that when I served her the papers, I could just go there. 
Now, we lived in a small town and the neighborhood was pretty close-knit. I didn't want to just leave the both of them there to live happily ever after. So during Memorial Day weekend, I hosted a huge blow at cookout and invited everyone to join us. I rented a bounce house for the kids, bought fireworks and manned the grill all day. Right before it came time to light the fireworks, I gathered all of the adults in the area then shared the evidence with them. My wife and neighbor didn't notice right away. But when everyone started whispering and looking at them, they started to suspect something was wrong. When my wife finally came to talk to me, she tried to explain that it wasn't what it looked like and she didn't know how those pictures were made. I ignored her and told her I was filing for divorce, then went to watch the fireworks with my son while she scrambled trying to figure out a way to save the life. I'd given her turns out her sister was very involved in the affair. I can't say for certain, but it almost seems like she encouraged it. I tried not to talk to my wife during the divorce proceedings. But from what she explained, she thought I was too absent during the pregnancy. And after that, she sought comfort with our neighbor, but she failed to mention how I sacrificed being with her for her and our child's health because I had so much exposure at work. My neighbor had no plans to leave his wife for her. Either he cut contact off with my wife completely and moved away because of how ostracized he felt by the neighbors. He's threatened to sue me for sharing the evidence. But I don't think the courts will be too pleased to hear about how he left his daughter with my ex-sister-in-law just to cheat on his wife. I have shared custody of my son with my ex. Now, my ex and I still live near each other and are doing our best to co-parent and make sure our son still has a happy loving family. I'm sorry, your wife betrayed your trust. I can't believe she tried to blame her infidelity on you. Given the circumstances, you did the right thing to ensure she and your son would both be healthy in uncertain times. Her sister was definitely encouraging her or at the very least enabling her behavior. You did the right thing by moving out and moving on with your life. It sounds like your son has a father with a strong head on his shoulders. I'm sure the neighbor will realize he doesn't have a leg to stand on with the lawsuit and will stop threatening you with it. It sounds like you've handled the separation and divorce. Well, and I wish you the best of luck moving forward. And thank you for what you did for your community during the pandemic. You didn't deserve to be treated that way by your spouse. Thank you all for taking the time to listen to today's stories. If you enjoyed listening, please feel free to like and subscribe. If you haven't already, also comment below with your thoughts on what happened. If there is a story you would like to share with me about your own situation or someone else's, then please do not hesitate to contact me.